What is going on, guys? I'm the one, the only, the W-O-O-K-I-E. Told you guys we were going to start doing these um, not only on the podcast, but on video as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you do, let me know. As always, an audio-only version will be available over on Spreaker uh, and Stitcher and now Spotify. Spotify has picked us up. So I thought that was kind of nifty. Uh, really do appreciate that Spotify picking us up. And uh, for those of you, I know a lot of people have been Apple and uh, Google Play. The applications are in. Um, I'm waiting on them to kind of, you know, do their thing and get us available and in, in, in there. So today we're going to be going through the upfall of the Queen's Bastion. Obviously, you guys can see a .34 consistency, 86 SAS rating. Means it should be decently solid, right? Uh, 16 creatures, 17 artifacts. I'm sorry, 17, 17 artifacts. Could you imagine a deck with 17 artifacts? Uh, two artifacts and one upgrade. Uh, Ember, ADHD reading Ember is a 24, which is a plus 647. So that's a nice start. Board at a minus 629 for a 12.0 rating. Ember control 3.0 for a minus 251. Eh, that's not so good there. Uh, and efficiency at a plus 642 uh, for a 14 overall. Obviously giving us a consistency of 0.344. And you can hear me still struggling uh, with my, you know, quote unquote, cold that I have. So I apologize to you guys. I just, I, Wisconsin can't decide what weather it wants to be. So we're going to sniffle away. Oh, again, another gross one. <laughs> another gross one. But SAS rating uh, of 84, four synergies, two anti-synergies for a total SAS of 86. Always like to see card ratings above the 80s. Uh, that usually means the deck's going to be pretty solid. So starting out with Untamed, six creatures, five actions, one upgrade. Way of the Wolf for an Ember. Uh, this creature gains Skirmish. Not bad. Witch of the Eye. God, I wish. The Witches are so powerful and like nobody values them because they're in like so many decks. Um, every witch, Witch of the Eye, Witch of the Wilds, and Hunting Witch, and Choda. Choda's a witch, too. So powerful, yet, like, I just feel like they're so undervalued. Uh, three power creature, when she reaps, you can return a card from your hand, uh, from your discard pile to your hand. Again, super powerful. She doesn't live usually long enough to, to use that, because, like, as we'll see in the next card, Mermook, three power creature, your opponent's keys cost plus one. They they're just they're they're low powered creatures. They become automatic targets, right? You don't want your opponent getting cards back from their discard pile. And in fact, not only just cards back, any any card they damn well want uh, from the discard pile. And Mermook, obviously, you don't want to be paying extra for your keys, so they become automatic targets. Uh, Niffle Ape, three power creature. Niffle Ape is attacking when a while. Niffle Ape is attacking. Ignore Taunt and Elusive. It does come into play, people. It does. Um, sealed Niffle Ape rules. Tons of taunt, tons of elusive. Uh, Niffle Ape can kill an old Bruno. Just saying. Keep that in mind. Uh, but we got Hunting Witch, two power creature up next. Each time you play another creature, gain one. Super powerful again, just doesn't have the sticking power. I wish maybe they made Hunting Witch. I wish maybe they made the Witches uncommon. And gave him elusive, or maybe even rare, and gave him elusive, a little more powerful. But it is what it is. But a double pair, double pair, just two, two dust pixies. Uh, you know, just a one power creature giving you two amber. You know, obviously pair that up with the hunting witch. Bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a key. Too bad, no choda. Because that would have been nice. Pix dust pixie, or hunting witch, dust pixie, dust pixie, choda. Mm hmm. That's good stuff. But uh, we got Troop Call for one Ember. Return each friendly Niffle creature from your discard pile and from play to your hand. You do at least have one Niffle Ape. So maybe you get them back. Maybe you don't. Maybe you play the card for the Amber. Um, if you can pair that up with, uh, obviously, Hunting Witch, if he's in play, bring him back to hand. Get him out. Or, or, I'm sorry, you know, reap with him. Bring him back. Play the Hunting Witch. Yada, yada. All that fun stuff. Gain, gain as much Ember as you possibly can. So Troop Call, not a bad card. Uh, grasping Vines for an Ember, return up to three artifacts to their owner's hands. We've been talking a lot about Artifact Hate as of late. This is one card that semi-hates Artifacts. 
because really it just delays them. Um, but this does play a big role. You know, say they have a Lash or a Dominator Bobble. Um, mm, I don't know if you necessarily want to play it on a Speed Sigil or an Evasion Sigil. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, it all depends on the scenario, but a little bit of Artifact hate there for you. Curiosity, what Ember play? Destroy each scientist creature. Yikes. Um, I just, I, re- I know you have a logo, so I'm thinking how many scientists are here. One, two, three. Four scientists, so yikes. Little anti-synergy there for you here, but it does give you one ember. Um, it sucks having to discard this card, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just got to do it. Life web for one. Uh, if opponent played three or more creatures last turn, steal two. This does happen. Again, I, I find myself using life web more in sealed play than I do in constructed. But hey, you know, I, I've seen people plop out three urchins just to steal them. And, uh, you know, steal a couple back. Why not? Regrowth for one. Return a creature from your uh, discard pile to your hand. Works really well with Dust Pixie, Hunting Witch. Uh, so you finally get your Hunting Witch and your Dust, Pis- Dust Pixie is sitting in your discard pile. Go get it back, obviously. Get, get that three ember. Because remember, this is a race to 18 ember. So that would be what I'm choosing. So pretty solid. I, I dig this build. Um, I don't necessarily know. It's it's kind of a tie. I don't know if this is going to be your main house because there's not a whole lot going on up here. This seems to be a lot of stall. Um, you know, Dust Pixie's not not really doing much. He's just kind of a pain uh, that gets you to Hunting Witch. Again, just a pain, but not not a powerhouse. Niffilate, eh, not a powerhouse, but you know, kind of a pain in their side. Mermook, which the yeah, I kind of. Both just pains, not really powerhouses. So strong, I think, contender for for your for your uh, support house. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, I guess we'll get into this here in a little bit, and we'll we'll kind of figure it out. But uh, logos, Ganymede Archivist, love them. Three power creature that kind of flies under the radar. Uh, when you reap, you get to archive a card. So I mean, again, he flies a little bit under the radar. You don't often notice him. Just because he's just kind of there. You know what I mean? He doesn't really hurt you. He doesn't become an immediate target. He's just there. and But really strong ability in being able to archive a card. Titan mechanic, big body creature, six power creature. Uh, while it's on a flank, each key costs minus one. This w- would have made this, having maybe even a Chota in there, even nicer. Uh, you know, obviously the untamed side, but that's that's not the case. Uh, obviously, you try to play him in an opportunity where maybe your opponent doesn't have the ability, or maybe they got four ember, you have six, you're going to forge on your next turn. It puts a little bit of pressure on him either to steal two or uh, kind of deal with Titan mechanics. So, And he's tough to deal with. He is a six-power creature. So. Dr. Esco Terra, when you play him, gain one for each forge key your opponent has. Great in the late game. Not so good in the early game. But he is a four-power creature. You can reap with him. Um, more likely than not, he'll die. So with your efficiency, hopefully you're cycling. You know, hopefully you're cycling super quickly. So that's nice. Uh, crazy killing. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot one. The Vespillion Ther- Theorist. He is an elusive two-power creature. When he reaps, you choose a house. Reveal a top card of your deck. If it's of that house, archive it and gain one. Otherwise, discard it. So kind of a different version of Wild Wormhole, I guess you can say. So he reaps, he gets you one, and then you call a house and flip it and hope it's of that house to be able to archive it and gain one. Otherwise, discarding it. Hopefully, it doesn't discard a card you need. Say you're in need of some Ember Control. Obviously, you don't want to get rid of your Charette. So kind of going to have to pay attention to what's in your discard pile depending on how you want to use him. Really, honestly, especially late game when we're getting to two keys apiece and you need that little bit of ember control. Uh, you know, may, hopefully you realize that, you know, oh, this, let's call this just to be on the safe side. And it's a charrette, you know, hopefully. But crazy killing machine. Ar- artifact. Action. Discard the top card of each player's deck. For each of those cards, destroy a creature or artifact that cards house. If able. If Two cards are not destroyed as a result of this Destroy Crazy Killing Machine. So this is like the truest form of a mixed bag you can actually have. So everybody's going to show the top card, discard the top card of their deck. 
and you're going to get to destroy either a creature or artifact of the same house. If it doesn't kill two cards, it, it itself gets destroyed. I've played decks with Crazy Killing Machine where I flip, I got to destroy a creature of mine, and they flip, they have nothing out of that house. I've had it the opposite way, where they got to destroy something of theirs, and I don't have to destroy anything. I've had it where we both destroy something. It's just, it truly is an honest dice roll. That's what you're, it's it's a dice roll. It's all it is. So, kind of one of those things, unfortunate, but, you know, it, it has its perks, and it has its backfalls, so... Just be careful with the crazy killing machine. Library access for the remainder of turn each time you play another card. Draw a card. Follow that up with a phase shift. Again, this deck is like one card off of so many things, right? If you had a Nepent Seed, you could really go to town with the library access phase shift. Um, you got the Titan mechanic, which would have worked good with Chota and uh, Untamed. You're, just, you're, you're that one card off. Do you have a mind? No, nope, you got two control of the weeks, though. Uh, no mind barb, so you're like a, you're a card off there. Ugh. It's got to almost be sickening looking at it and just knowing that you're just a card off of having it. But um, uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if I said it already, but if I didn't, you can play one non logos card this turn with Phase Shift. And it gives you an Ember. Um, another Ember generating card and Twin Emission Bolt deal two damage to two different creatures. It, it works. It's super nice. Uh, love that card. Lab Work, Ember. Uh, archive a card. Easy as it gets. Archiving is awesome. This deck really wants to archive because after that, it's got two sloppy lab works. Now, I prefer sloppy lab work over lab work. And a lot of people ask me why. And I say, in a, in a pinch, a lot of times I may have a card in my hand I want a deep six, but I can't because I'm not of that house. Sloppy lab work allows me to get rid of a card in my hand that I don't want. And lets me refill. And it doesn't have to be at that house. Not only that, I do get to archive a card. And what's even nicer is if you do dump your hand and play Sloppy Lab Work, you archive a card, discard a card, but you have none. So you just get to archive a card. So I just did really enjoy Sloppy Lab Work. I've always had fun with it. Uh, and then Flogify, one ember. Your opponent cannot use creatures to fight on their next turn. That's all for the fog of, for the logo side, for the Flogify side. For the logo side. Um, again, a, a, I think it's a solid Logos build. I think you can obviously store a lot of cards for later to make good use out of that Vespillion Theorist. Uh, I, you know, kind of synergizes a little bit. Not really. You got Curiosity and Grasping Vines, uh, which is going to want to get rid of your crazy killing machine, which maybe you're okay with. Um, like I said, it's always a mixed bag with it. But moving into Dis, six creatures, five actions, one artifact. A pair of charrettes. Love this card. Play Capture 3. I love her because the card, four power creature, it's bigger than most, right? It's tough to deal with, and it's something at some point you're going to have to deal with. Capturing 3 is a big deal. It's half a key, and you have 2. So you're going to have to deal with charrette. Charrette makes you make tough decisions because obviously you want your ember back. Whereas, say, like a old Bruno's a three, you can pawn sacrifice him. Or you can, you know, you can kind of get rid of old Bruno a lot easier than you can Charette. Charette's a little more tough. So, dig Charette. Uh, Dust Imp, obviously, uh, take that twin emission bolt when you deal two damage. You can you can send one into Dust Imp for the two Ember. Otherwise, just reap and, and make your opponent kill it. You know, make him give you the ember. You know, you're you're gaining ember by just reaping. They're not going to want to destroy it. But at some point, either they're going to have to because your board's getting out of control or they're going to have to because it's just it's reaping. It's hurting them every turn. So I, I dig the dust temp. Overlord Grecking. Ugh, I got I to gotta get comfy for this one. I, I dig Overlord Grecking. I do. Um... <sighs> I've, I maybe I'm playing him wrong. I've just never had much success with the card. He's a seven power creature, so he's a big body. I find myself using him more often than not to get rid of a large threat. He can get rid of somebody up to six, or you know two threes, or a three and a two, or a three two one, or however you want to do it. I guess his biggest ability, I think, is the ability to take away 
a big a creature that's going to hurt you on their side. I guess that's his biggest strength is to make sure you're Fagans of the world or hunting witches of the world, witch of the eyes, stuff like that doesn't hurt you. And it makes it into a creature that I had to deal with, but I've stolen it. Now you have to deal with it. So it kind of flips the other foot. It's good. I just, I find myself more often than not just end up killing something big with it. That's just, it's not a big deal, but obviously you want to be doing that. So, Stealer of Souls, after an enemy creature is destroyed, fighting Stealer of Souls, purge it, gain one. I do dig the Stealer of Souls, you know, the urchin. Kill the urchins. Or anything, you know, old Brunos. You know, use the dust. Oh, I'm going to tackle my dust and boy, oh, he's going to get you. And then elusive, but then you Stealer of Souls. It does allow you, and he's a six power, so again, another big body. It does allow you to kind of, you know, mess with that a little bit. So, I, I dig Stealer of Souls. I, I do like him. Losing one and getting rid of a creature all together for the rest of the game. Time Traveler, anybody? Just go right into Time Traveler, lose one, and purge him. Can be big. Library of the Damned as an action. Archive a card. Pretty good. Um, How often... Uh, uh, these cards, and especially artifacts, become more more dominant when you're going to be calling that house when they're in your main house um i see you calling a lot of untamed uh maybe a lot of just too it, it's really good tie but i i see untamed and dis being called quite a bit and in fact you know what they're they both can go through i mean they're both identical six creatures five actions one upgrade or one uh that has one upgrade. This has one artifact. So, I would say this. Yeah, maybe it's not bad. This might be your uh, your your house. But arise, I love arise. Arise has killed me so many times. Choose a house. Return each creature of that house from your discard pile to your hand. Hello, untamed. Get them all in your discard pile, and they all come back. Ooh, that's something nobody wants to hear. Pandemonium for one ember. I'm sorry, does it rise? No, it rise doesn't give me any ember. Uh, Pandemonium for one ember. Each damaged creature captures one from its opponent's side. It has its purposes. It's a nice little... Charette's going to be damaged, guarantee you. If not killed, but damaged. Guaranteed. So, not not bad. You know, uh, Dustin, probably not. Overlord Grecking probably will be. Uh, Tentacus. Oh, we didn't even go through Tentacus. He's a five-power creature. Your most pay you one in order to use artifacts. He'll probably be damaged at some point in time. Again, another big-bodied creature. I kind of dig it. Uh, I think Dis actually is going to end up being your main house because of just these big bodies. They're going to have staying power. So, totally dig them. Uh, fear. Uh, return an enemy creature to its owner's hand. Board control, always nice. And then a pair of control the weeks. One ember, choose a house for your opponent next turn, basically. Your opponent must choose that house on their active house next turn. So, not bad. Played correctly. Nothing is better than the feeling of picking the house and your opponent going, go. I'm done. I can't do anything. Oh, is that a fantastic feeling? You, you gotta love it, right? When you when you do that really good control of the week. Obviously, pay attention to your uh, to your opponent's discard pile to see what they've played more of keep a count obviously you know that there's what there's 12 of each card in a deck i believe so keep that as a kind of a reference uh, and maybe they only get one off one is just as good well zero is the best but when they only have one it's 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 pretty nice i i dig it um you know i see this deck being pretty competitive to be honest with you um i'm surprised yeah it's board's a little weak yeah i guess 18 so four six twelve Oh, that's right. I yeah yeah, but I, I see it being pretty competitive. Um, it probably could win. There's enough irritation on the dis side for, for that you know to get that person off off of their, you know their their game plan. And there's a nice amount of you know just get you you can call logos to literally stash cards away for later. Because a lot of that has all just you know, the ability to tuck cards in your archives. 
So calling Logos to stash, you know, uh, just a big untamed turn, it might do you well. You know, stash stash away that hunting witch and those two dust pixies until you got a mitt full, grab them, bam, deal with it. You know, here's here's 15 umber, or what, you know, whatever. So uh, solid deck, obviously 86 SAS, no joke. Uh, card rating of 84, again, no joke. I would like to see a little more amber control here. It just, it's not what it is. I, I actually honestly think you could do it. I think it, I think it could totally 100% win at a local tournament. So uh, thank you very much to Ethan for submitting this deck to us. Guys, if you want to submit a deck, go to archonscorner at gmail.com. In fact, just email it to me there. Don't go there because there's nothing there. It's my email address. So just email me over a deck. Um, we're, we're working through the list. Um, if you guys want to be put uh, put higher on the list, I am going to be having a, a Patreon tier here shortly. You can find the Patreon down in the description below. I'm going to be putting a Patreon tier to shoot you right to the front of the list uh, for your first month. Uh, I, I haven't figured it all out yet, but we're getting there slowly but surely. But thank you guys oh so much for listening again. I have no idea how long this has went, and I honestly am hoping I recorded it. So if you guys are enjoying it, Again, on the video side, hit the thumbs up. But if you're enjoying it on the audio side only, hit the like button. Every, every little bit helps. Tell a friend, tell a wrestler, tell everybody you know. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.